the News 18 India to welcome our next panelist, Neharika Rai Zada, who is a scientist and an actor. Crowned Miss India UK 2010 and a runner-up at Miss India Worldwide 2010, Neharika Rai Zada defines herself as a scientist with acting abilities. She is the granddaughter of music composer late O.P. Nayya. She has worked in films like Masan, Total Dhamal, Surya Vanshi, and so on. She still continues with science as well as acting. Welcome, Neharika. So with this, we'll begin with this session, Reimagining Talent. Over to you, Jyoti Kamal. Thank you so much, Archi. And thank you so much, Harika, for taking the time out and being with us at this uh, Laspiration Summit again. And um, like you were saying, that you have been a Miss India UK. You have been a Miss India International Runner-Up. Uh, and all of that kind of really something that you hadn't really worked for in terms of that being your primary target. You had kind of got into this whole medical, translational medicine kind of a thing, and then you wanted to be a scientist, you were from a science background. How did that kind of dovetail into all of this? At what point did you decide, okay, this is the track that I want to take? Uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Jyoti, for having me. I feel very honored to be on this platform. The talks that you've had are brilliant, and it really shows the diversity that India has. Why did I choose the beauty platform to uh, come up in the uh, glitz and glam world? The short answer is, it's one of the easiest ways to connect with people from this world. That's the short answer. And I always knew from a young age that I want to be part of the cinematic world. So the beauty platform was one platform which was accessible to everybody. There was no uh, stereotype there. There was no blockage. There was no barrier. Anyone from any background could be a part of that. And at the same time, if you got recognized on that platform, you would be considered you know, by potential people who might do cinema. And my target has kind of always been cinema. Why have I pursued academic because I truly believe that one has to mentally challenge themselves and I think that uh, despite having your artistic flair you must have a very strong academic background and it is my family's principle it is our culture that we must educate ourselves and I chose science and I chose medicine and in my family there are many people who have had cardiac ailments so I wanted to specialize in cardiology so I've had to Two passions in my life, cinema and cardiology, and I've been very clear about that from the beginning, from a very young age. The beauty pageants was an easy way to at least get a foot in the door and connect with that world. That was the only reason that I chose that platform. And, you know, to represent India in any way has always been a dream of mine. So I think to, to win, I actually won, so I was very happy about that. You know, despite all the odds against me, I've had a lot of odds against me my whole life, but I still won, so it was very good. <laughs> you started in Luxembourg, and uh, you've seen the best of both worlds. You have kind of seen how education is in the West. You kind of acted in a uh, Western production, which is Coyotes, uh, okay. and uh, thereafter you have kind of obviously worked in India quite a bit. How do you kind of compare what it was like in the West and what it's like here, and the very fact that you've also been a Fulbright scholar? So, so you, you have been really kind of taking academics, learning to a certain level. You've been exposed to kind of education in the West, and now you are here in India. How do you kind of see your bringing all that experience and exposure to India? Has it enriched you? Did India kind of help you in terms of your education there? How do you kind of now bridge these uh, Western and Indian influences? So first of all, I must tell you, I have built my life the way I wanted to build my life. From a very young age, I was very clear that India was going to be my final destination. Because I, you may, you know, question where these thoughts came into my mind, but I truly saw India as a diamond, you know, for the future. I thought that India is going to prosper in every way possible. So India was always my final destination. By fluke of how my parents landed up in Luxembourg, my father worked for the European Commission. Luxembourg is one of the headquarters of the European Commission. And we were born there. We are three children. And 
we are very fortunate and it's a privilege to be born in Luxembourg. It's a very small country, very rich country. And, you know, there's so much to learn from there. But belonging to an Indian family, I have a very uh, strict father and a very Indian father. My father is from UP and my mother is from Rajasthan. And I think growing up, we have always had a very Indian uh, upbringing, despite being in Europe. And I've always missed my grandparents. I never got a chance much to stay with them because we were always abroad. So coming to India was a must for me on the cards. Now, how I got here, I took my last bit of Fulbright scholarship money uh, and I came with that to India. Before that, because I was Miss India, I was actually brought when the World Cup happened in 2011 as a brand ambassador. And again, I was introduced to the world of sports life in India. And I've been very fortunate. I've been now a part of so many different aspects of Indian life. You know, and that's exactly what I wanted. I wanted this life, you know, I wanted to be a part of it. It is very different and even the filmmaking process is different because we make films in Luxembourg which are government funded and they have no expectation of a box office. Whereas in India, people make films only mainly to make money. So that approach towards filmmaking is very different in both countries. Uh, apart from that, I think that the process is the same. I think when you go on set, when you, I've done, like you said, I've done this French uh, web series show called Coyote, and it's the same process. You go on set, camera rolls, action happens, and then the actor performs. So that's not different. But the reasons why people make film in Europe and the reasons why people make films in India is very different. Very different. You are the Opinaya's granddaughter. You could have chosen something in music, though of course you did kind of pursue music also, and you have also been a classical dancer. But is that something that you think you could have kind of taken forward? So maybe my... And what are your memories of Opie Nayaji and uh, what is it that you recount? We've you been, said that you didn't get a lot of time, but still. We've been uh, brought up on his music. सारे उनके जो गाने हैं मतलब मैं जब से पांच साल की हूँ तब से मैंने उनके गाने सुने सब गाने सुने मतलब मेरा शायद सिनेमैटिक बिगिनिंग ही उनके गानों को देख देख के है मधुबाला हो माला सिन्हा हो आशा पारेख हो कोई भी हो जिन्होंने उनके साथ काम किया हो तो दैट इज व्हाट आई थिंक फैसिनेटेड मी एज अ चाइल्ड बिकॉज वी वर रियली एक्सपोज टू दैट म्यूजिक uh, old memories, when we used to come to Delhi, we would meet, you know, uh, we have a place in Punjabi bag where his sister and him used to stay. But my grandfather, you must understand, he's a very uh, alhar and aloof personality. He was very in his own way. And when he took his hand in the film industry, he was in the film industry. So he was not in the family. And this is what happens to someone. So I think that... Uh, Whatever interaction I've had now are from the people who have interacted with him during my journey here that I've been in India. I met so many people who have been in India with him. The last 20 years of his life, he spent in the house in the house in Maharashtra. So those people who have been with him, I've had discussions with them. जो हमारे कुछ फैमिली मेंबर्स हैं जो ज़्यादा नहीं बोलते लेकिन फिर भी उनके साथ जो इंटरेक्शन है और फिर उनका संगीत मैं हमेशा यही कहती हूँ एन आर्टिस्ट्स विजन इज विजिबल इन देयर आर्ट यू नो एंड इफ यू लिसन टू हिज म्यूजिक एंड यू लिसन टू द वे ही कंपोज्ड ही वाज वेरी अहेड ऑफ हिस टाइम सो आई थिंक दैट यू कैन सी अ लॉट इन ऑफ अ पर्सन इन देयर आर्ट when you were in Luxembourg and when you had gone abroad यू वर वेरी क्लियर दैट यू गोइंग गेट बैक टू इंडिया बिकॉज यू थिंक इट्स अ डायमंड दैट इज अ लॉट ऑफ पोटेंशियल फॉर द फ्यूचर now that you're back here, what's your take on India today and India in the future going forward from where we currently are? Do you kind of stick by what you thought or do you want to have a second take on that? So I have seen the journey starting from Anna Hazare to Modi ji and I have uh, seen a lot of growth. I have seen a lot of growth, no doubt. Uh, I am from the medical and uh, healthcare industry to begin with. That is my underpinning and that is my beginning. So I would definitely like to say there are many aspects of India where still there's a lot of development and, you know, especially in the healthcare industry. When I was here, I would always talk about, you know, research combined with medical uh, applicability. Both should be together. There is no R&D here. So I used to talk about that. 
और बहुत सारे एस्पेक्ट्स हैं जिसमें बहुत ग्रोथ हुआ है इंडिया ओवरऑल इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चरली हैज डेवलप्ड अ लॉट इट इज गोइंग टू डेवलप इवन फर्दर आई एम वेरी प्राउड द वे इट इज ग्रोइंग एंड आई बिलीव दैट माय हाइपोथेसिस ऑफ इट बीइंग वन ऑफ द मोस्ट इनक्रेडिबल कंट्रीज इन द इयर्स टू कम इज गोइंग टू कम ट्रू यू नो यू आर लाइक मल्टी टैलेंटेड यू हैव रियली काइंड ऑफ spanned so many different kinds of uh, experiences you have studied abroad you have been in luxembourg luxembourg is one of the richest cities in the countries in the world mm -hmm. and when you look at luxembourg and the theme that we are kind of also exploring here which is la aspiration the aspirate the aspiration side of life the ambitious side of life luxury when you see what you saw in luxembourg and now when you see kind of uh, a lot of demand in india because when you look at punjabi music Uh, you see a lot of references to lamborghinis and uh, gucci Prada. and pradas <laughs> and right, everything right. so when you kind of hear all of that uh, what do you what do you make of it because you've seen it you've lived it you kind of can look back at it look you can look forward at it whatever so what do you make of all of this what what stage are we at तो जब, जब हम लोगों को हिंदुस्तान वापस लाया जाता था तो हम लोग दिल्ली में ही रहते थे तो दिल्ली का जो चलन है ना इन जनरल वो काफी हाई फाई एंड ब्रांड कॉन्शियस ही रहा है हमेशा सो दैट इज समथिंग व्हिच हैज बीन सीन एंड आई सीन इट अ लॉट यू नो इन द पास्ट वो बड़ा है दैट हैज बिकम मोर and uh, as you said songs are mentioning it there are so many more references now to luxury brands but i think what is the most important and what really hits home and what hits at an international level is the fact that indian faces are now headlining and spearheading these brands you have a Alia Bhatt, who is the face of Gucci. You have a Deepika Padukone, who is the face of Tag Heuer. You have Shah Rukh Khan. You have so many people now, who are. You have uh, Manushi Chiller, who is the face of Estee Lauder. I want to be the face of Dior because that's my French background, you know, and that's my manifestation. One day, I want to do that because it's my mother tongue, and you know, I have that Indian background. It is my dream, you know. For example, but if that happens before, it was not allowed. Before, an Indian face could not be the face of an international brand, but today you see a change. in that that means that people are looking at india in a very different way in general if you see the statistics the market has grown so much already the consumption of luxury brands in america has been already a billion dollar industry but here it is growing by leaps and bounds you know and they say by 2030 or by 2050 it might be a 9 10 12 billion dollar industry to jahan log hain wahan paisa hai aur wahan pe luxury brands to dikhenge hi dikhenge to india is going to obviously i think conquer the luxury uh, image in that sense and it is not something which is new to us i think that india hamesha se sona ki chidhe rahi hai aur rahegi and that is my belief i really believe in that and hum hum bas wapas wo sab mil raha hai jo hamare paas pehle se tha jo hum uh, you know wapas se recultivate kar rahe hain is zamane ke hisab se to aisa hi hai fantastic niharika we can't let you go without uh... your uh, kind of multi talented skills and multilingual skills actually and being op nayer ji's granddaughter all of that you know where we are going so you can kind of uh, really put it all together and then sing something and uh, then kind of translate it into different languages and let's see how it goes main gana to nahi ga paungi meri abhi tabiyat itni achhi nahi hai lekin ek bahut mashhoor gana hai mere sanam ka 1965 film ka biswajit aur aasha pare ka us us gaane ka naam hai jaiye aap kahan jayenge to is is line ko jaiye aap kahan jayenge ye nazar laut ke phir aayegi agar main alag alag bhasha mein bolu to to french mein bolenge où irez-vous Votre regard reviendra encore. That's in French. German me. Wo gehst du? Wird dieser Blick wieder zurückkehren? In English, where are you going? This gaze will return once more. In Spanish, donde iras? Esta mirada volverá de nuevo. And mere Luxembourg ki bhasha me. Wo geht dir? This block gift rum. That's but, but, that's but, but, like all the languages. You want to set it to music now? I have to sing it. Yes, no, absolutely. all of them in all both of them. languages. Name me, I sing all of them. Let's see how it goes. I'll, I'll sing just the Hindi version because that French wala bethe ga nahi uske. Let's let's try it. Let's see. I'll I'll sing the Hindi version. All right. Okay. Jai aap kahan jayenge? Ye nazare laut ke phir. आएगी ये नजर लौट के फिर आएगी 
Fantastic. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you want to try that in French and in German? Try, oh, try right. one. Let's see how it goes. Oh, how can you put it? Okay. Okay, let's let's try. Oh. Où irez-vous? Ce regard reviendra encore. Was it not? I can't do more than that. All right. Thank you so much, Nihalika. It was fascinating listening to you and your kind of spanning so many cultures, languages, fields of study. It's just mind-boggling. Thank you so it's much. It's so for impressive, me. and it's so heartening to see Indians like this. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you so, so much for being a part of our Thank show. Thank you for having me. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you, Neharika. Thank you, Jyoti Kamalji. Please stay on the stage. Now I'll request Jyoti Kamalji to felicitate our panelist, Neharika Raizada. Thank you, Neharika. Thank you, Jyoti Kamalji. With this, the discussions conclude, and I'll now request 